Hey everyone, so today I'll be going over the surly corner handlebar. I finally got it all wrapped up, I've thrown grips on, and I've actually done a, a small modification to it, so I'll go over that as well. And I'll also show you my two favourite shifter and brake lever positions, and what I like and dislike about them. Hopefully this helps people set their own corner handlebar up. It might give you a couple of things to look out for and think about when you're setting yours up. And you might even do the modification as well. I don't know. But I hope you enjoy the video. If you've got any questions, I can always do another video to show and go over them later on. So this is one of them here. This ended up being my second personal favorite. So the thing I didn't really like about this was that it sort of intrudes on the most comfortable hand position. So with these handlebars, I really liked my hand being sort of just at that bend in the drop and the brake lever was just too close to that. So I ended up grabbing like too high up on the brake lever blade. So I didn't really get as much leverage as I would with my fingers nearer the end of it. So that was one of the big issues for me with this position. And also because I had the separated shifter and brake lever, that the shifter was a little bit too far away for me. So I preferred definitely by quite a lot the brake lever and shifter being up top, which is pretty much <laughs> how they have them in most photos anyways. Both the brake lever and the shifter, they ended up being in pretty much the perfect position from here for me anyways. So there's a nice gap between where your hand is and where the lever starts. So the lever blade feels like it's in a nice position. Uh, keep in mind these are like a more modern lever that are pretty much intended for two finger or one finger use. So with my hands at the furthest part back of the drop, I can't quite reach the brake lever, but that's not a huge issue really. So these cables are the factory cables that came on the Kona, and you can see that a little bit of flex there still. The dropper post cable was a little bit too short, so I'll have to extend that, but it's just a gear cable anyway, so that's easy as. So about the only thing that I don't really like about this handlebar is this hood position. So you sort of have to wrap your hand around the lever, which it's not really great. Um, I know it's not really meant to be a hand position, but I thought it would be nice to have an additional hand position in that same sort of spot, but further forward. There are products that you can buy just off the shelf and fit it and it will extend it a little bit. I wanted a little bit extra than those and the scooter four inch handlebar extensions would have taken about three, four, four weeks or so. And I was just too impatient. So this, start, this starts off looking pretty cheap, but it ends up being really expensive. <laughs> so I use a mountain bike handlebar end, just like the old style like this. Specifically one that has like the plug that goes in like that. So you have a bit of purchase on the bottom. So you cut it down and then that exposes a bit of a, a, a hole sort of with the threads, which I just filled with JB Weld. I did that just so I can drill in through the bottom pretty easily. So this part is where it gets expensive. This is a Weather People Supreme bar end, which is like, it's a 50 New Zealand dollar handlebar end. It's not cheap at all, but this is the most secure thing that I could find. It's got a really good knurled wedge system and I could easily retrofit it to this. So after a bit of filing, I got that end plug to fit in nice and snug into the inside diameter of the handlebars. And then I drilled a hole through before I cut this valley. So one of the main reasons why I used this, frankly, really expensive handlebar end was that I could pretty easily retrofit it to suit this application. So I tried a couple of other styles, but the wedge systems I couldn't make fit too easily to where I could torque them up nicely. So a couple of them I tried and they just kept spinning and spinning and spinning. So I tried two different systems and then I thought, bugger it, I'll just go all out and buy this expensive one because I know that that's going to work for sure. So both wedges on it had quite nice kneeling, which would give it the best chance of being nice and strong. So after throwing it in and talking it to buggery, it was secure as. I put all my weight on it and it didn't budge at all, which it just gives that peace of mind. So if I'm going uphill or whatever, and I want to get some leverage on the horns, I don't have to accidentally break one off. Um, you could also just weld an extension on. It's a steel handlebar, so you shouldn't really have any issues with that. I don't want to go through that route. Um, I might do it later on if I find like an extension uh, that I really like. It would be nice to have sort of like a little curve on here as well.
So from here, I just slapped on some grips and then started sort of figuring out how to wrap the handlebars. So this took me a few tries. I initially thought that I'd put some padding over the brake levers just to make things a bit more comfier. This is a Nitto monkey banana, monkey banana, something like that. And it had some old grip shift grips that I thought I'd try as well. So I cut those up and sort of formed them to shape. So the handlebar grip cut up and sort of formed to, to fit over the brake lever. It ended up being really comfortable, but with the amount of handlebar tape I had, I couldn't make it um, look and feel as nice as I'd hoped. So I just had some off cuts and stuff. So what I ended up doing was just scrapping the padding all together and just using some old olive drab handlebar tape that I had sitting around. It was just an off cut, so it wasn't as long as I was hoping. So I made a bit of a compromise there, but it still remains to be a really comfortable hand position. It's just not as <laughs> soft and as vibration dampening as what it could be. Uh, further down the line, I might actually put some padding here, get some more handlebar tape, sort of when this wears out and recover it. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like this. Looks great. It's comfortable as especially with those really bright colored grips down in the drops. So if you have any questions, then leave them down below. I'll try and answer as many things as I can. If you do want another handlebar video showing whatever you want to see really with the corner handlebar, then let me know and I can try and cover that in another video. But otherwise, thanks for checking this one out. The next video will be a retro mountain bike build up. So thanks for checking out the video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.